This example introduces what we call an amortization table. An amortization table is a schedule that lays out the payments in a mortgage, and for each payment, it splits up that payment into the amount that goes toward paying off the loan and the amount that goes toward paying off interest. So that's the key to an amortization table, is that it partitions the payment into those two pieces. So if you visualize each payment as a fixed amount, part of that payment goes toward paying off the principal, and the rest goes to paying off interest. And at the beginning of the loan, the picture looks like this, where a smaller amount goes toward paying off the principal, and the majority of the payment goes toward paying off the interest. But as time goes on and you pay off this mortgage, slowly the line slides to the right, and more and more of the payment can go toward principal, as less and less has to go toward interest. So that's the idea of what an amortization table does, is it lays out exactly how much of each payment goes toward principal, how much goes toward interest, but those two numbers will always add up to the fixed payment amount, and that amount stays constant throughout the life of the loan. Typically, an amortization table has four columns. The first column just lays out the payments in order, so we're asked to fill out the first two rows, so we'll just do the first two payments. In theory, we can continue this process for as many payments as we want, and we could use a spreadsheet, for instance, to lay it out for all the payments of the loan, for all 240 payments of this 20-year mortgage. But since we're doing this by hand, we don't want to go through that tedious process, so we'll just do the first two and illustrate the process that would be used to fill in all the other rows. The other three columns are the interest column, which, again, specifies how much of the payment goes toward interest, and then the principal column that specifies how much of the payment goes toward principal, Again, those two numbers will always add up to the fixed monthly payment amount, which in this case is $1,550.60. And then the remaining balance is listed after that payment. So the balance at the beginning is $200,000. Whatever principal gets paid off the first month will be subtracted from that, and the balance will be the remainder. And then, of course, the second month, more will be taken off the principal, leaving a slightly smaller balance and so on all the way through all 240 payments. The calculations for an amortization table are actually pretty simple. At each stage, all we have to calculate is the interest using the simple interest formula. The reason we use the simple interest formula is because we're just zooming in on one month in particular. And if we're just looking at one month, the interest that accrues for that month, well, there's no time for compounding to happen because it's just one payment period. So all we need is the simple interest formula. So for the first month, the balance, the principal, is $200,000. The interest rate is 7%. And the amount of time, well, it's one month, which is 1 12th of a year. And since T is measured in years, we'll put in 1 12th. So the interest for the first month is 200,000 times 0 0.07 times 1 12th. Calculating that, we type in 200,000 times 0 0.07 divided by 12, which is the same as multiplying by 1 12th. And we find that the interest for the first payment is $1,166.67 if we round it off. So out of the monthly payment that month of 15.50 and 60 cents, $1,166.67 goes toward interest, so the remainder goes toward principal. So if we subtract that amount off from the monthly payment, the amount that is able to go toward the balance is $383.93. Notice again, if you added those two together, you would get $15.50 and $0.60, and that's always true for every row of this table. Now, we started with $200,000 in debt. We paid off just $383.93 of that. The rest was just paying off interest. It didn't go to pay down the balance at all. So the balance has decreased from $200,000 by $383.93. So the balance at the end of the first month is $199,616.07. Now, for the second month, that's the starting balance. So when we calculate the simple interest for the second month, we use that for P, 
R and T stay the same. So we'll multiply that answer times 0 0.07 divided by 12, so that's PRT. So the interest for the second month is 11.64 and 43 cents. Notice that the interest the second month is a little bit less than it was the first month. The reason is that the balance at this point is a little bit less than it was for the previous month. So because less of the monthly payment is taken up with interest, more will be taken up by the principal, and the change will be the same in both numbers. So I take the monthly payment amount, subtract off the amount that has to go toward interest, and that remainder is what goes toward the principal. So the second month, $386.17 go toward paying off the principal of the loan. So at the end of the second month, we started with $199,616.07. We paid off $386.17 of that. So at the end of the second month, the remaining balance is $199,229.90. So we can continue this process for another 238 rows, filling in all 240 payments. Each time, the interest payment will drop a little bit because the balance is slowly dropping. Each time the interest payment drops, the principal payment goes up by the same amount because the interest and principal will always add up to 15, 50, and 60 cents because the fixed monthly payment is always the same. But this is what an amortization table looks like, at least in part. We slowly watch the interest payments decrease, the principal payments increase, and the balance slowly drops until at the last payment, the balance goes to zero and the loan is fully paid off.